Thank you, everybody, for still remaining here. Right. Um, what I'm going to talk about is the, the project I'm dealing with, combining both my professional activity as a freelance archaeologist and my research interest as a PhD student back home at, at, in the Basque country. Um, but first of all, I would like to thank the Basque government because I didn't expect that them to provide me with some funding, and they did. So that was good. <laughs> Because, because this project about intertidal is not very well understood in the, where I live. Well, anyway, and also some friends and family who were supporting me for this project, and also the people at Citizen and the Change, Change Discovery Program, because I approached them to say, listen, this is me, I would like to do this. I would like to know more about what are you doing, so in that case, I can copy and adapt. So in a way, I was spying on you. So, for those who are not familiar with Biscay, we say in, in Spanish and in Basque, Vizcaya, but Biscay is, you know, you might know the Gulf of Biscay, so what, that's where the name comes from. Uh, we are in the north of Spain, in the Basque country, uh, and this is the province I live, and Bilbao is the capital. You might know more familiar with Bilbao because of the Guggenheim Museum, which is up the estuary, about 15 kilometers from the sea. Uh, in case you don't know who I am. This is me. <laughs> okay. Last year, so some of you might recognize me now. I know with the overalls and the high vest and all that. And so, as I said, I, I did this uh, estuary surveys. Those are the ones I started to deal with because I knew previously that I was going to find material there. Um, just a, a very quick overview about the different estuaries and with the flags that I managed to, you know, with the GPS, uh, something which is from my point of view of interest and obviously they will need more research. So a very quick overview about some of the uh, places where you can find on the different uh, estuaries. So you get an idea. Some of them have been already deal with by other colleagues uh, related to industrial activities, etc. but they are not looking in an holistic point of view about what is buried when the tide uh, goes down. Okay, so again, very quickly, so you can realize that I really walk along all these estuaries, you know, sometimes in some places a little bit tricky because of the mud. In fact, there are some areas where, for which I decided not to go into that, because it was so tricky and I said, okay, that's it, no more. Um, but anyway, there are some areas which are of particular interest where you will find, so you uh, later on, for instance, this is quite interesting from my point of view, although it's not my theme about, you know, how reclaiming land on the uh, estuaries, but I really found very interesting this area. There are some uh, places for shipwrecks to be tossed away over there, and we got quite a, quite a lot of them. So this is uh, Guernica is on the top over there. You might be familiar with Guernica. And again, this is one of the stories very complicated because it's quite wide from one shore to the other. So I have to use a drone to see if there was anything in between uh, just to go straight into that uh, because there was no a possibility for me either to go with even a small boat or something. Uh, so the drone, uh, was a possibility. As I said, there are areas which are of particular interest. This is a nice uh, creek here with a lot of different boats. In fact, you were taking pictures and then you would stop and something say, oh my God, there's another one underneath. <laughs> so anyway, so I went up to the last moment where the tide goes. Uh, again, this has been a particular, it's still a shipyard. Uh, and this was traditionally the place where ships were more in the wind conditions, sea conditions were not good enough. So I guess that might be a good spot for medieval, because medieval wrecks eventually. And um, yeah, so you can see there are many. Well, uh, now going back to Bilbao, I found this uh, uh, fish weirs quite interesting, even if they are quite modern, because I think they're reflecting that in an industrial place like Bilbao, you could still find people fishing for baby eels. And I think there's a connection with the past ac activities, which is not, we, we haven't found any timber, but we got a, in, in stones. 
Now, also with my professional activity, this was uh, in here. I have to do a watching brief, and this timber was exposed. And the funny thing is that the, the dating was 1210, 1275, which uh, I thought was quite amazing because the closer clinical bit found that we got is this, which is in the Archaeological Museum in Bilbao, from the same uh, period as the Newport ship. You know, the Newport is from the Basque Country, this is from the Basque Country. So this timber was 200 years earlier, and my brain was like, woo, woo, right? <laughs> in fact, I wrote a paper saying we got a new uh, wreck. Uh, uh, medieval wreck in the Basque country, even if it's just this, this timber. Okay? Now, also was uh, involved in this um, uh, breakwater uh, redevelopment because it was supposed to be from the 18th century. Eventually, later, people found this stone anchor. It's the only uh, three hole classical stone anchor for Biscay. We got in the other province where San Sebastian is. There's about 30, 40 different ones. This is the first one. Uh, I guess there should be more eventually, will be exposed. And also from my watching briefs in Bilbao, this is the Bilbao area, keep in mind this, the Osto Canal and the shape of the, of the bend there. So I've been doing some uh, archaeology there, you know, or doing the watching brief. And this is very interesting, once you do the, the you research in documents, plans, photographs, how the actual river course has been changed uh, it was done in the late 19th century, early 20th century. So uh, from my point of view, it's a good opportunity to understand how human beings have been changing uh, the river courses to, to adapt to their own needs. Now, used to be an island here. Keep in mind on this, and that's why I, I place the San Vicente chart, because it's like a key point to understand the different changes that we are going to see eventually. And, and this is it. This was this canal here is not the original one. The river was going this way. And in the 17th century, because of the floodings, the local authorities called a, a Dutch or a Flemish, I cannot remember now, uh, engineer, and he opened this canal. Now, a lot of people in Bilbao think that this is the actual original river, but in fact, it's this one. And you can see how this waterfront has been used for building ships along there. Unfortunately, once this was redeveloped, no archaeological stuff was done there in the past. Remember that this is in the uh, early 20th century, 13th, you know, uh, until uh, later when the, for the last five years I've been doing this watching bridge because the waterfront has to be uh, redeveloped or, or uh, uh, repaired. Uh, and that, that's why I got all this information about the different plants. So now you can see the island is gone. It was gone in the 1870. Again, some of the pictures about how the island looked like. Now, it's still keeping the names. Rampas de Uribitarte. Uribitarte in Bax means the place in between waters. Okay? So I'm not going to get into Bax linguistics, but, <laughs> okay. but you can see that still the, the place names is important in a way. Rampas, you know, is the ramp because it's a different height. So you go the ramps to go into the lower part, the San Vicente Church again. And this is more or less the now nowadays landscape and the street plan. So as I said, this is the, the place where the river used to go, which is now covered. Again, some of the other features, buildings that we can find are helping us to identify how the waterfront has been changed. And from that, I spoke to this, which I think is the island, which nobody saw, has seen since 1870. Okay. And some other features related to industrial activities, you know, with the engineering drawings about the different features we're finding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And unfortunately, this is the only crane remaining uh, for the whole of the, the Bilbao industrial maritime activity. Now, more things about how the, the waterfront changed. This is the theater. This one, that's the one they proposed to enlarge which is that one, and that affect the whole waterfront, as you can see the different cranes and ramps, and all that disappear, okay? But we can still find within the pictures some of the uh, features which are available if you use an archaeological approach, okay? And again, somehow the waterfront extended with the different bollards, drawings, etc., etc. 
the right ways for getting the cargo in and out. Okay. So from my point of view, many people say, well, Pastor Robbins, there's no interest. But I think he's telling us the story about how Bilbao approached the river. Okay. So now the modern rains, the stairs, which are no longer available, but in the past they had a purpose. Okay. And this is how in the 70s was the industrial activity. Keep in mind on that because now the ramp disappeared, but we can still see it's available there. It's under the stairs. Okay. And this is the Deusto Canal. Now, this is an island. It was officially open on Monday. And the archaeologists doing the watching brief, I finished on Thursday. So it was open on Monday, finished on Thursday. You get stuck. <laughs> OK? And so they built a bridge. And they, they were opening for the last nine months. They have been opening this. OK? Now, this is uh, from Monday. It's now a new Manhattan style. Because this is the idea. It was designed by Saha Hadid, which is a British architect who passed away recently. So the whole project about this new redevelopment for Bilbao is, is uh, based on uh, her ideas. And in, even there, you can find these very interesting you know, uh, remains, like this iron barge, which is one of those taking coal, iron ore up and down the, the estuary. And you know, nobody pays attention to that. And then I say, well, I need to go there and measure, you know, because this is going to be affected by the opening of the canal. You know, the foreman said, no, 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 it's not going to, op to be affected. And then eventually one day it was there and this beast disappeared. Okay, so anyway. But along this, uh, yes, this, this is called Zorrozaure. Again, another Basque name meaning in front of Zorroza. Zorroza is here. Okay, so along this, uh, waterfront, you can find a lot of different uh, maritime activities related to all the industrial uh, factories, etc. Many are quite famous from the industrial point of view in the Basque Country. There's a famous one for biscuits. A lot of people know about that. And, uh, and here we can find a lot of different features, which uh, from my point of view, every time I walk along, they say, come on, come on, record us. You know, we want a story to tell you, okay? And again, this is the opening of the canal, as I mentioned, and we found, Damien, this is for you. <laughs> we found these uh, uh, sticky things coming out. <laughs> yeah. Remember, I mentioned earlier, you know, the bend of the river, okay? Uh, and we found this eventually. Nobody knew at the moment when I said, well, these timbers might look not, not about this, you know. When we found some of those, hmm, and then they be suspicious about, ah, that's rubbish, no. And then we got this, which is a floor uh, timber side frame. Once you clean them, you go Roman numerals on them. For me, it was quite interesting to find that in got number five, and again, number five. So now I need to see they match together and get a nice carve, or they are completely different one. In that case, what we're having is two ships built at the same time. Like here, we've got the evidence for that. That's where the Guggenheim Museum is. Look at that, it's diagonally to the river because the river in Bilbao is quite narrow, so you cannot uh, launch the ship uh, sideways. You have to look for the uh, diagonal shape. And what I think I'm, I'm having is these sticky things for the slipway. Now, also the use of drones, as I mentioned in the uh, Guernica estuary and all that, because uh, this is quite a lot of distance here, so you cannot walk, you cannot use a boat because you will be stuck here eventually. So the, the use of, of drones to see if there was any feature uh, there was quite useful. And then also to pinpoint places where you should, you know, go and, and, and check, like this vessel in the middle of the mud or in those little cranes that certainly if you are walking, here you might miss, okay? So with that uh, help, you can go as this, look, the grass is eating all the remains, okay? So you need to really pay attention to all the places where you can find. And as I said, there are places where you will find, you know, I think here there's about eight different vessels. Yes, there, very in the mud, okay? This is one very similar. You know, close one on top of another one. Again, the grass 
and the tide is eating, the mud is, is covering everything. So I think we're in the, in the key moment now to, to record all that. Obviously, it's not only related to Rex. There are also many other uh, features. Uh, some of them, sorry, and Spanish, so I don't know the difference in worth. Jetty, you know, something's a little bit complicated for me, pier. So, uh, but this was particularly shocking because it was in a place quite far away from, uh, from the mouth of the estuary. And I was like, what are you doing here? You know, and uh, I would like to do more about this, but it's in a dodgy place anyway. But you can see there are a lot of different uh, uh, elements which uh, we need to, to do more research on that. This is one of the remaining shipyards, very famous. It's been collapsed, but there's a program now to try to get some money to restore, but still we can find some of the elements, the same for the tide mills. Uh, and this is what I mentioned earlier about those places with claiming land that you can see, you know, the walls, the, the timbers being there, which I think are, uh, should be, you know, worth uh, having a second look at. And again, you will find uh, places of, with uh, very uh, interesting uh, features. Sometimes just a few sticks pointed out. This used to be used to get workers across. There used to be about 25 different ones. Now only two are in use along the uh, Bilbao estuary. And then another very interesting feature for me are these sort of uh, steps carving on, on natural rocks because now they don't go anywhere. So the question is, what are you doing here? When were you built? Who built? What was the purpose? And unless you go with the low tide, you're not going to see, because you can see the tide goes up to here roughly. So you need to go again and again several times, okay? The uh, stairs which are now disappear. And look at this. I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, in the middle of everything, and there's two steps there. So certainly it's asking for more research on that to see what is it doing. And for the purpose of objects, I, when I did this survey along the estuaries, I was not looking for a small objects, but certainly I came across some of them, like this coin, you know, just like that. I forgot the, the scale, sorry for that. Uh, I think it's quite modern, but anyway, it's proving, you know, that there are things available there. The funny, I was a little bit excited at the beginning because it was found in an area where the Roman coin was found, and it was, my God, I've got a Roman coin, you know, but I don't think it's going to be Roman. But certainly, you know, you can find other things like that, this round stone shot, maybe. So I would like, again, to go there and do a, like a little trench and see if there's a, a, a stone shot or, you know, maybe any other, any other thing. So... This is, as I said, it's an ongoing project that I started basically last year. There are many things there available to do more recording. I would like to do more eventually if I manage to combine my professional activities with my research activity, even if I'm funded or not. Because I think we are now in a moment when these sort of elements are going to disappear sooner or later, particularly all this area with the new redevelopment. That, I mean, the local authorities are not going to have, you know, a Manhattan-style island here with this rubbish thing on the foreshore. So, and I would like to, to make a different approach and, you know, uh, try to record as much as possible, even if it's just from the archaeological point of view and for others who I hope they will come after me to do more uh, research on that and, and being able to, to get a better story as the one I'm telling you. Thank you very much.